Volunteer Helen Friedman talks about her introduction to Experience Corps. I was uh, in between volunteering at museums and, and uh, California Historical Society, and I wasn't doing too much there. I don't volunteer on a regular basis like Joe did, but uh, projects or I would help out over at the school testing kids for special programs and uh, uh, I, yeah, I worked on crafts over at, uh, at Presidio, too. Friday afternoons they have a craft class, and I helped with that. That tends to be my area. You know. I still feel to a certain degree that when I'm over at Experience Corps that, you know, I love everybody, and they, they seem to like me a lot, too. I don't feel like I do enough because I don't, I'm not one day a week someplace doing something with some kid, you know. Well, she feels insecure about that. No, I don't feel insecure about it. I just don't think that, that's, that I really help that way. Experience Corps volunteer Betty Price talks about what drew her to the organization two years ago. And there were several other things. I was just looking to volunteer because I, I don't have trouble finding anything to do. I, you know, I love to read and I love movies and plays. And so it's not like I'm ever bored, but somehow I felt a need to, to do something constructive and not just totally selfish and so I was a poor reader I had a grandson that was a poor reader and I thought maybe I could get into some kind of reading program to help children and also when all the funding kept getting cut and everything you know money kept getting scarcer and scarcer in our educational system I thought I should do something poet and retired professor Rich Yerman recounts his first meeting with Experience Corps six years ago we talked for over an hour. It was a great interview. We were really on the same page about how to deal with kids. But, you know, we sort of chatted about this idea of being there for the child, not necessarily to improve her academics, not necessarily to get her to be a better reader or a better student, but just to give her an adult presence that is not a teacher and that's constant in her life. So she went to Francis Scott Key, hooked me up with this girl, um, and it was just magical. The first day I went, she was uh, Chinese, the parents speak Chinese at home, so she was having trouble with reading, she was having trouble with English, and we just had this immediate connection. She, she it was like, uh, you know, she's, it was second grade, she's seven years old, and as soon as we started reading the book, she put her head against my arm, and she, you know, she started, she said, my arm. and she said, uh, are you coming back next week? I said, sure, you know, and, and this, this litany started where she had me coming back to work with her till she graduated high school. Right? Are you coming back next year? Are you coming back in fifth grade? Are you coming back in middle school? Are you coming back in high school? As long as you want me, I'll come back and work with you. Volunteer Joe Friedman makes community outreach and recruitment a priority of his involvement in Experience Corps. And Experience Corps has energized me, it's very it's been very happy. In fact, it has allowed me to change my decision about my health. I don't think about my health. In fact, when I first started in 1999, I had some pretty white hair. Now look, I have some black hair tops. <laughs> we have to get the teachers to know who we are, the uh, administration to know who we are. And when I go to the schools, I try to do that. Hi there, I'm, I'm so and so, and uh, you're the secretary and the principal. I submit and so on. I try to do as much of that as I possibly can because I think that's so important. <laughs>